Hey there, welcome to the Movie Review Mom YouTube channel. Thanks so much for spending a few minutes with me. My goal is to give you the heads up on filmmaking quality and content so that you can decide whether or not you wanna spend time or money or both sometimes watching a particular film. So the specific movie I'm reviewing today is called One Life. This remarkable biography of sorts is now playing in theaters. The movie is rated PG, but I'll tell you about the content and I'll give you some tips for parents here in just a minute. It's an hour and 50 minutes long and my overall movie review mom grade is an A. I thought it was an amazing story. What I'll do is I'll give you an overview in a nutshell and then I'll point out tips for parents, themes worth talking about, things that I really liked about the movie, things I didn't like about the movie, uh, interesting lines and recommendations for some other films that are also similar that I think you'll really like if you like this one. All right, so in a nutshell, the powerful film is based on the true story of Sir Nicholas Winton, who saved 669 children during World War II from 1938 to 1939. After he died, the newspapers announced his obituary and called him the British Schindler. And that's referring to Schindler's List. And if you haven't seen that movie, you absolutely need to see that movie, an award-winning movie. Uh, but I'll give you some more recommendations in addition to that one. So the film was directed by James Hawes and writing credits go to Lucinda Coxon, Nick Drake, and Barbara Winton. The movie is based on the book by Barbara Winton called If It's Not Impossible, The Life of Sir Nicholas Winton. Already, the film has won Best Narrative Feature by the Palm Springs International Film Festival and definitely deserves that. So some quick tips for parents. I think children are going to be extremely bored. It's a lot of adults talking kind of a movie, not big action or anything like that. There is some German, French, and Czech spoken, usually without subtitles. There is talk of Nazis, torture, World War II, of course, concentration camps, and that kind of thing. That's the setting of the film. Now, some of the themes that are illustrated very well are the value of a single life, the importance of scrapbooking, regrets, service to others, and humanitarian work, sacrificing for others, teamwork, humility, Jews, and the Holocaust, World War II, and Nazi aggression. All right, so on to the long list of things I really liked about this movie. First of all, they had me at Anthony Hopkins. Actually, I need to say that correctly, Sir Anthony Hopkins. I have been such a fan of his for decades the man can do no wrong in my book and is an Academy Award winning actor. The cast also includes three Oscar nominees, which are Helena Bonham Carter, Jonathan Price, and Lena Olin. I also adore Hel Helena Bonham Carter. And as it turns out, her maternal grandfather also rescued many Jews from the Holocaust by forging Spanish visas. That's amazing and impressive. In this film, Lena Olin disappears in her role as a regular housewife in England. But to see her as her more normal, glamorous self, you'll definitely enjoy her performance in the movie Upgraded, which is a rom-com I recently reviewed. And in fact, I'll cue that one up as soon as this movie is over, just so you can kind of see a few glimpses of her just looking beautiful. Now, I've seen Johnny Flynn in more comical roles, so I was impressed with his portrayal of the young, dedicated Nicholas Winton. I thought he did a good job. The set designs, costumes, props, and even sound effects perfectly take you back in time to World War II. We see lots of photos of the real children Sir Nicholas Winton saved during the war, which is so touching. We also get to see pictures of them as adults surrounding their hero, which is also so touching. They called themselves Nicky's children. He remained close to them until the age that he died, which was age 106. Six. That's amazing. 
It was sad to learn that the United States of America did nothing to help these refugee children. The plight of international refugees is still great today and continues as a huge humanitarian need in the world today. I love the title of this film, which comes from the quote, he who saves one life saves the world. This was also quoted in the 1993 Schindler's List movie and is reported to have been from the Talmud. We get to travel to Prague and England in the film. I always love to travel in movies. I especially love traveling in real life. And I've been all over England several times, but I'm finally going to get to go to Prague this summer. And I'm so excited to see it. Everyone says it's stunning. You will cry while watching this film. I couldn't stop the tears from flowing at about the one hour, 36 minute mark when Nicholas sat in the studio audience of the 1970s real life BBC TV show called That's Life. You're just going to need some tissues. I'm just warning you. Bear warning. The no nonsense telling of this story is very British to me, quite modest earnest and humble, which happened to be the same characteristics that Sir Nicholas Winton possessed himself. We get to see footage of the real Sir Nicholas Winton being knighted by Queen Elizabeth II, which is awesome. In a world that is spinning out of control currently, this is the kind of story that we need more of. It is so heartwarming and inspiring, reminding us that one person truly can make a positive difference in the world. And at the end of the movie, we learn that over 6,000 people in the world today are alive because of the saving efforts of this one man, Sir Nicholas Winton. This movie is going to make you want to be a better person and look around the world to see what positive difference can you make. And I love walking out of a theater feeling that way. Now, with all of that praise, there were just a couple of things, three things that I could even think of that I thought could have been done better or differently. For example, Acts 1 and 2 focus on the woes of bureaucracy. There is a lot of paperwork and just going back and forth and adults talking about how are we going to do this? I don't know. Here's another roadblock. Oh, uh, you know, that kind of thing. And so don't get discouraged by that. It drags a little bit. But keep watching because Act 3 is a powerful payoff that you don't want to miss. Anthony Hopkins, as I mentioned, of course, is in the movie. He appears briefly in Acts 1 and Acts 3. However, Act 2 flashes backward in time to tell the story of the younger man played by Johnny Flynn. And so if you're a big Anthony Hopkins fan like I am, you're going to say, wait, we want to see more of him. However, it's a nice balance of going forward and backward in time and looking at a period of time. It's not really a full biography, but it's a, a, an analysis of that period of time where this humongous humanitarian project was carried out and then a lifetime of reflection afterwards as uh, this man becomes uh, regretful that he couldn't have done more, which is just amazing in and of itself. Now, whenever I watch movies, I take notes, of course, but I specifically write down interesting lines and funny lines simply so I can share them with you so you can get a taste for the dialogue and the script writing quality. Now, in terms of funny lines, I didn't write down anything. This is a serious drama as well it should be. It's a World War II movie, which is a heavy, heavy topic. But I wrote down some really interesting lines, and you can find all of them at my written review at moviereviewmom.com. Uh, but so there's an interesting line that really summarizes the whole essence of who this man is. And so he flies over to Prague and he's trying to talk about how are we going to save these children. So the younger Nicholas Winton, played by Johnny Flynn, says, Ordinary people wouldn't stand for this if they knew what was actually happening. And then a local native woman there, played by uh, Ramola Garay, says, you have a lot of faith in ordinary people. And then he comes back and says, I do, because I'm an ordinary person. 
And that's how he saw himself. He did extraordinary things. And even toward the end of his life, or at least towards the end of this movie, he again felt badly that he couldn't have done more and it haunted him and he cried and was remorseful. And, and yet, you know, you're thinking he saved 669 children who grew up to become adults and live full lives. And he felt very ordinary. And that's why I think it's especially touching uh, towards the end in act three, when you see what happens. And I don't want to give you any spoilers because it's really, really amazing. All right. So I mentioned Schindler's List earlier, but there are two other movies that I wanted to let you know about. I'm always amazed when I discover new movies that are just now being made about stories from World War II. I'm just amazed that there are still stories to be told that we haven't even made movies out of. And so I reviewed two of these. I think these were last year, maybe the year before, I forget now. Uh, but one of them is called Remember This. And the acting is phenomenal. It's actually a one man movie and it's exceptional. And it tells the true story of another man who did remarkable things during World War II. And I kept watching this thinking, why don't I know this man's name? He was incredible. And then a similar story, this time it's a full cast, is in a movie called Resistance. And again, I'm like, how do I not know this story? I'm so glad they turned it into a movie. And there are countless other movies that I recently reviewed in the last year or two of additional ones that came out. And I say keep them coming because the more we learn about them, the more we can be inspired to stand up for what is right and to make a positive difference in the world. All right, that's it for my review. Hopefully my reviews are helpful because I truly do want to save you time and money and help you zero in on the really great stories and films. So you can always see my written reviews first. I usually have those go live before I have the time to record them and po post my reviews on YouTube. Um, so if you're ever wondering if I've done a review, run over to moviereviewmom.com and you can see my written review first. But I really appreciate your support here on YouTube. Anytime you like, subscribe, or even comment down below, it spreads magical YouTube fairy dust all over my channel so more people can find it. So I can help more people find the great movies that are out there. All right, have a fantastic day and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.